Legislative, executive, and judicial, three branches of government. Three of the seven articles of the United States Constitution describes these branches. The first article forms the legislative branch. The second describes the executive branch, and the third, the judicial branch. First of all, the legislative branch is realistically the most powerful branch of government. The branch is also known as Congress, and they are in charge of creating and passing laws. Congress grants certain powers. Some of those powers are to regulate commerce, impose taxes, borrow money, declare war, impeach the president, and many others. To be a part of Congress, you are required to live in the state you are representing. Congress is bicameral, which means it consists of two houses, the House of Representatives and the Senate. Both groups meet in the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. The House of Representatives holds 435 elective members who are distributed among the 50 states based on the state's population. To be able to run for the House of Representatives, you must be 25 years old, a citizen of the United States, for at least seven years. The leader of the House of Representatives is known as the Speaker of the House, who is currently Nancy Pelosi. The Senate includes 100 elected officials, with two representing each state. To be a part of the Senate, you must be at least 30 years old and a citizen of the United States for nine or more years. The ongoing Vice President, Mike Pence, is the leader of the Senate. He usually isn't there, though, so the President pro tempore, Chuck Grassley, leads the meetings. The Founding Fathers created two houses because they wanted to balance the power between all of the states. Then there's the Executive Branch. The Executive Branch consists of the President, the Vice President, and his Cabinet. A executive Branch works in the White House, which is also where the President lives. The job of the Branch is to implement and enforce the laws that Congress creates and passes. They also work together to create laws. For example, when a bill is passed through Congress, it is given to the President to either sign or veto. If it is signed, then the law goes into effect. If it is vetoed, then it goes back to Congress for another vote. If two-thirds of Congress agree with the law, then it would pass, but if not, the bill dies. The Vice President is elected if the President they are campaigning with is elected. They are also always ready to become the President's successor if anything happens to them. Both of them have to be natural-born citizens, at least 35 years old, and a resident of the United States for 14 years to be able to run for office. The President currently Donald Trump nominates cabinet members who are either confirmed or denied by the Senate. For the cabinet, there are no requirements or minimum age to be a member. There are 15 departments in the cabinet, all of who have a head titled the secretary, except for the attorney general. Some of the most important departments of the cabinet are the secretary of state, who takes care of, nat of foreign affairs, the secretary of treasury, who takes care of the nation's budget, and the secretary of defense, who is responsible for the United States military. The secretaries advise the president on their area of expertise and execute their duties as cabinet members. Lastly, there is the judicial branch. Their, jobs, their job is to interpret laws made by the legislative branch. Most of the branch structure is up to Congress. For example, Congress created two court systems, the federal and the state. The federal court system job is to deal with disagreements about laws that were, apply to the entire United States. Sup the Supreme Court is a part of the system. Congress also shapes the court, deciding how many justices there are. The court doesn't hear many cases, so currently there are only nine justices. There are the Chief Justice and eight Associate Justices. The role of the Chief Justice is to preside over arguments, lead discussions in cases, and choose who gets to write the court's opinion if in the majority. Current Chief Justice is John Roberts, who took his position on September 29th, replacing William Rehnquist. The President appoints the Justices. The only time new ones are appointed is when old ones retire or die. The most recent Justice appointed was Brett Kavanaugh, nominated by Donald Trump. He took oath of office on October 6, 2018, succeeding Anthony Kennedy. The state court system is much larger, having over 30,000 judges, while there are only 1,700 federal judges. The system has both the appellate and the trial court. Overall, the system hears over 100 million cases per year. They hear cases that either affect the entire state or individual people. 
In summary, the three branches of government all balance the power. They keep each other in line through a system of checks and balances. Through the checks and balances, no one branch will gain too much power. Together, they work to become an unbiased and fair government.